y'all welcome back to my channel or welcome to my channel if this is your first time here my name is Latia B and in today's video I am answering some questions that I received on Instagram I was in the middle of deep conditioning my hair but then I was like why not make this a deep condition with me type of video so if you're interested in knowing what deep conditioner I'm currently using I'm using the Camille Rose Naturals rich infusion moisture treatment and this is one for dry lifeless and tangled hair this particular deep conditioner is from their Around the World collection and I've already done a review on it so if you want to check that out I'll be sure to link it above so that you can see how I liked it um, in that video and what my full thoughts on it were um, in there so we can just go ahead and get into this video. I've actually been getting quite a number of questions on Instagram basically asking me about brand ambassadorships, how to secure them, how to get them. Oh, well, that's kind of the same thing, securing, securing one and getting one. Um, but you know, how to get a brand ambassadorship, some tips on once you get one and things of that nature. Um, so I have previously recorded a video on my channel um, how tips on becoming a brand ambassador and I'll link that above so you can see it Those are just like some very General tips that I found helpful for myself that I share with you all but I also did a blog post um, That basically describes some tips on securing your first brand ambassadorship So I will link that down below it is on my blog so dazzlingblog.com But I'll leave the direct link to that post down below in the description section so you can check it out again There's some very general um, tips on there, but in this video I decided that I wanted to take some I guess viewer or follower or whatever questions and kind of answer them to the best of my ability one question that came up time and time again um, as it relates to being an influencer content creator or you know just brand ambassador really i guess more so it's how to become an influencer it's more related than a brand ambassador specifically but a lot of people have asked where do you start so for me it was kind of easy to find my place to start because i mean natural hair is kind of my thing i have natural hair so it's kind of just easy for me to fall into that niche however if you are someone who does not know what you want your niche to be or what you want your category or specification to be i would highly suggest that you just kind of take a step back and think about the things that you're good at what are the things that you're just naturally good at that you feel like you can offer some type of um, input on so for me i like to do like product reviews or you know my styling videos wash and goes twist outs whatever because i know that those are the things that i'm good at and i know that there are a number of people who like to see me do product reviews and a lot of times i have noticed that people have actually messaged me and said that they bought something or they didn't buy something based off, based off of my review of said product so if you are someone who um you know wants to become an influencer then i highly suggest that you just sit down and take the time to really think about what area can you contribute to the most now that's not to say that you have to stick to one area for me i started out with natural hair care like that was it but i'm kind of dabbling into the skincare realm as well as you have seen with my various skincare videos that i've posted in the past so it's okay to choose like maybe but i'll say one to three things max like you you there are certain people who can get away with doing everything like blog i mean excuse me vlogging travel lifestyle beauty you know fashion whatever they can kind of get away with doing a little bit of everything but i feel like it's mostly the more well-known influencers that i have seen that have really been able to you know do everything without but becoming confusing so if you're just starting out i would say stick to maybe one to three things to you know start with so that you can get comfortable you can build your audience and so that you can get acclimated with being a content creator the other thing that i would say when it comes to figuring out where to start i would say figure out your why a lot of times people get into or want to become an influencer for the free product or you know this or that or because they want to get paid but really you kind of have to have passion behind it for me uh, again i'm using myself as, as an example because i know myself the best <laughs> so i'm sorry if i talk about myself a lot in this video but i'm just trying to give you all some you know real life experiences and just my 
tips i guess as i'm answering these questions but when i first started my youtube channel it was literally just a hobby um i wasn't in it for the free products i wasn't in it to get monetized to make money off of it or anything like that although i knew that those things were nice and you know were all nice and fine those just weren't the things that were at the forefront of my mind when i got into making my youtube videos and the reason why it was a hobby is because as most of you know if you've been watching my youtube channel is that i am at the end of my phd um at the end of completing my phd degree so i really needed to find something that i truly enjoy doing outside of science that can like take my mind you know away from it and allow me to do something that i absolutely love and be able to share with the world so that's kind of why i started my youtube channel but as i started to grow I honestly did see the potential for me to, you know, utilize it as a side hustle. So if you are in it, you know, for the money, then, I mean, that's cool. Do you. But you do have to have a plan. And you have to remember that you're not going to get to wherever it is that you want to be overnight. It's going to take, you know, time. It's going to take patience. It's going to take sacrifice. And it's most importantly going to take consistency. So in short, if I have to, you know, give some advice on where to start, sit down, figure out one to three things that you're most interested in or you feel like you can give the most input to and kind of just have the you know most impact. And then from there, just kind of brainstorm some things that you can do in those areas and then kind of just go from there. You know what I'm saying? I mean, as a creative, you really have free reign to do whatever you want and to show your creativity in how, whatever way that you want. So once you figure out what area that you feel like you will have the most impact or would be most passionate or most you know successful in then just brainstorm some ideas of things that you can do and how you can contribute to that community another question that i received is how do you turn an offer for a free product into a paid collaboration i do feel like that is a little more of an intense question because i feel like it's brand dependent some brands really just don't have a budget especially if they're a smaller brand however there are a lot of larger brands who do have a budget who will try to send you free products um, <laughs> even though that they know that they have a budget. So you could respond by saying something to the effect of, thank you so much for reaching out. Um, at this time, I am only participating in paid collaborations. Um, I would love to be kept on your radar in the future if you have any coming up or any other opportunities you know, in the future or something like that. I don't know. Um, but if they respond to you and say that they don't have a budget or if they're a smaller brand without a budget, then, you know, you can accept the free product, but let them know that in the future, you know, you would like to be considered for a paid collaboration or whatever, or you could just simply deny, you know, the offer and go for a, um, a paid collaboration. So I actually have a really good example. There were like three companies that reached out to me around the same time one company was i don't know i never I had, I, I had never actually heard of the brand before but when i went to their page i did see that they were pretty popular and when they messaged me they were saying you know that they wanted to send me whatever it was like their hair care kit or something like that so i messaged them back and i said you know thank you for reaching out i um, would love to learn more about this opportunity um i am at this time, something to the extent of at this time, I'm only participating in paid collaborations. If you like, I can send you over my media kit and my rate sheet, and then we can further discuss it if you would like to move forward or something like that. I said, I can't remember exactly how I worded the email. So the person reached back and said that they would be willing to take a look at my rate sheet. And when I um, sent it to them, they actually told me that due to my numbers, they were unable to offer me a paid collaboration, but would like to instead send me a free product. I kindly declined because even though, like this is the reason why I low key don't like the numbers game is like, sure you can have a large following and you may have a large potential reach, but if you don't have people that are engaging with you or you know actually listen to what you're saying, then it's kind of like, okay, what's the point, you know? So <laughs> their second instance was someone, it was a smaller brand and same kind of deal, told, them, told her the same thing. And when I sent her my rate sheet, actually I don't think she ever replied to me, but I think it's because she didn't have a budget and she didn't exactly know how to tell me that, which was cool. 
I'm not really, you know, pressed about it. But I say all that to say that if you are only, t you know, doing paid collaborations during a certain time period, then it's okay to let a brand know that because they may, you know, once they have a budget, they may want to work with you again in the future. I actually did a collaboration not too long ago where the brand we did collaborate, it was a paid collaboration, but their rate was a little lower than mine. Um, but, you know, they had a very strict budget. I accepted what their rate was because I wanted to still build that bond with the company because it was a company that I really believed in and a company that I really wanted to work with. So there are instances where you can, you have to decide what will be best for you. Do you want to accept this free product and just give them all of that exposure? <laughs> or do you want to try to leverage the situation to the best of your ability? And it's, I mean, at the end of the day, you're the one whose face is going to be behind the advertisement because at, um, we're being honest, it's an advertisement when we're showing these different brands in our videos and pictures and things of that nature. So if you want to be paid for that, it's okay to say that in a very respectful, professional way. Another question that I received is what platform um, what does it say? Hold on. I'm just, if you see me looking this way, it's because I'm looking at my phone trying to see the questions. <laughs> um, so this question says, what platform or company do you recommend that enable you to connect with brands? Well, there are a ton <laughs> of platforms out there that connect influencers with brands. Sorry if y'all heard that. I kind of hit the mic, <laughs> but there's a ton of platforms out there and Depending upon what your goals are, again, it will depend upon which platform you apply to. So one platform that I really like, especially for those first starting out, is called Influencer. I have a full video, like a very in-depth video, I'll post that above, on Influencer, how to use it and how to increase your chances of getting free full-size products for them. from them. So I've been with Influencer for about... I don't know two years three years something like that now and I've received so many products from them as a matter of fact a lot of the videos that you see on my channel like I have quite a few um, reviews of products that I've received from influencer and I actually just received another box from them which I'll be sharing with you all soon um, but it's a great platform because you really don't have to do like a ton ton of work at least in my personal opinion you don't and also you don't have to have thousands of followers I first started on influencer when I had like maybe I just hit a thousand or so and I got my first box with them like maybe actually I, for sure I know got my first box with them within the first month of me signing up so if you want to get free products then I would say that that is a really good um, platform to check out Another platform that I have been using, although um, the pay isn't as high as some of the other platforms that are out there, is called Ambassador, like Ambassador, but it's spelled Ambassador. Um, I'll leave the and I'll leave the links to all of these in the description box if anyone is interested. But Ambassador, I'm gonna just call it Ambassador because it's really weird and saying Ambassador like that. <laughs> But Ambassador is a program where they have various brands. Well, let me back up. So for Ambassador, so Influencer is free. Like there's nothing that you have to pay or anything like that. For Ambassador, there's two different versions of the platform. So you can sign up to be matched with opportunities on there for free, no charge. You just have to be signed up on the website. But then there's also a membership that's like $2.99. And for that one, I think that, you know, I was signed up for a while, but I ended up canceling it. Um, but with that one, you do get access to, I guess, some of the more elite opportunities that they have. And I have actually gotten quite a few matches on there. Only thing is the pay isn't like extremely high. So if you're looking for, you know, just some easy things to do, and a lot of times they don't require YouTube videos, you just have to post to your Instagram page. Um, and again, I don't think you have to have a certain number of followers. I can't really remember because I signed up earlier this year. I don't think you have to have a certain number of followers. But yeah, you can sign up on there and then you can apply for different opportunities. Um, another platform that I was signed up for that I stopped using is called Social Native. With Social Native, they pair you to opportunities. So it's like 
for me, I actually only got paired to one opportunity on there, and I couldn't even do it because I didn't, you know, associate myself with the particular brand that they were trying to partner me with. And it's not because it's like a bad brand or anything like that. I just don't uh, shop there. <laughs> uh, so yeah. So social native. And there's just a lot. There's a lot of different platforms out there. Really, I would just recommend you research influencer platforms or platforms for influencers or something like that. And I'm pretty sure you'll get a lot of them to pop up on Google. Um, if you really want, I can actually do a whole blog post on some of the ones that I've personally tried and then some of the ones that I've heard of. A lot of like the top tier platforms though do require you to have a certain number of followers. So if you're not in that follower range, they're not even going to accept you. I know from personal experience, <laughs> but, um, they're really good. Like once your numbers, you know, are up and then a lot of times I feel like Instagram or really, you really just putting yourself out there is the best way to connect with companies and uh, with brands because my Instagram, I feel like me being on my Instagram page, showing my passion for natural hair and showcasing some of the brands that I love and just doing tutorials on my Instagram page has actually connected with me, connected me to more brands than using any of these platforms have ever you know done for me so really just making sure that you're consistent putting out quality content um, you'll get on those brands radar especially if you tag them in your post so there's only two questions left because I'm like just rambling here and I'm gonna have to do some serious editing um, the first being is it fine to try out different hair brands at the same time now I'm not exactly sure what you mean by that I, I'm not sure if she meant trying out different brands in the same video or trying out different brands, like trying one brand, posting it, then trying a different brand and posting it. So I'll answer both versions of this question. Um, if you want to work with a brand, I feel like it is okay, depending upon what your goal is, to use multiple brands in a video. However, if you are specifically trying to work with a brand, so let's just use some examples here. Say I'm trying to work with Camille Rose Naturals and I only have the Camille Rose Naturals deep conditioner and I shampooed my hair with something else. I wouldn't necessarily show the brand of the shampoo that I use if I'm trying to get Camille Rose Naturals attention because I want them to either repost my video or I want to be able to work with them. So I want to show them that I am working or excuse me, that I'm using their products. You see what I'm saying? Well, I mean, y'all can't respond, but I hope you see what I'm saying here. <laughs> um, so in that instance, I would say if there's a brand that you're using in that video or that post or whatever that you're trying to work with, then I would really try my best to highlight that brand. Now, if you were talking about posting one brand and then in a different post using a different brand, then yeah, that's fine. I mean, I think the joy of being natural is figuring out what works, right? And at the end of the day, a lot of times when we're using these products, they're kind of like, they're like product reviews or you're testing them out to see how they work for you. So I think it's okay to post about multiple brands. And I've personally done that myself. Like I just recently did a post with Unicurl and then I did Shea Moisture and then something else, I think. But you know what I'm saying? Like it's okay to mix things up, especially if you don't want your page to be saturated with one brand. So I hope that answers that question because I wasn't exactly sure what was meant by it. <laughs> the last question is, is it okay to take a photo showing multiple brands in the same photo? And will those brands feel like some type of conflict or competition? If you are a brand ambassador or if you're doing a collaboration with a brand, then you absolutely do not want to showcase any other brand. I personally just feel like that's disrespectful. Like you don't want to be trying to showcase Shea Moisture while you're wearing a shirt that says Myel Organic or you know vice versa or whatever. Those are just examples, y'all. Those are just examples. But you don't want to show brand A while you're wearing brand B on your shirt. You see what I'm saying? Because it just it's just not a good look. And you want to show that you are committed to creating content for this particular brand without there being any type of competition. Because say that they really love your post and they really want to repost it. They cannot repost it to, your, to their page because you have another brand on your chest. So I would say definitely don't do that. <laughs> So yes, y'all, that is it for this video. I'm going to try my best to get it under 20 minutes if I'm unable to do that and you've made it this far. You, my friend, are the real 
MVP. <laughs> but anyhow, if there are any other questions that you all have as it relates to being an influencer or how to navigate the micro-influencer world or things of that nature, then definitely let me know down in the comment section. I will try my best to answer them. I actually am trying to come up with a way to get this knowledge out without having to always make YouTube videos. Um, so definitely stay tuned for that. If y'all have any other questions anyway, then you know, there'll be something for me to give y'all. If y'all don't have any other questions, then I guess this would be it. <laughs> um, but if you like this video, if you found it helpful in any way, please do not forget to give it a big ol' thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and while you're at it, go ahead and head over to my blog, sodazzlingblog.com. Right now, I am like on a low-key hiatus because I'm trying to finish my degree and that is my priority. <laughs> so I'm not really like super, super active on the blog at this time, but coming next week, I'm going to be having a giveaway that I cannot wait to share with y'all, but you have to be subscribed to my blog again that is so dazzlingblog.com and if you want to keep up with all things so dazzling because i really do post on instagram much more often than i do on youtube then go ahead and follow me on there as well my youtube my instagram handle excuse me is at so dazzling so now i'm done talking i'm about to finish deconditioning my hair and with that being said y'all do not forget to stay dazzling <laughs>